Howdy folks! One of the things that I really like about the animation industry is how someone at Disney, DreamWorks or Warner Brothers can end up having a very unique career path. For example, Richard Rich started off his career at Disney's Mailroom. He was later given the chance to co-direct such films as The Fox and the Hound and The Black Cauldron. He later left Disney and set up his own studio where he made such films as the Swan Princess trilogy, The King and I, and a series of educational cartoons based on biblical and historical stories. How inspiring and fascinating is that? In this episode, we're going to take a look at one of Richard's films, The Trumpet of the Swan. The Trumpet of the Swan is an American animated feature film directed by Richard Rich and his longtime producer, Terry L. Noss. It follows the tale of Louis, a trumpeteer swan who can't talk. One day, Louis's father steals a trumpet for his son to use as a voice. The trumpet helps him express his love to a swan called Serena. However, when Louis discovers that the trumpet was thieved, he starts a music career in hopes of repaying the instrument store his father stole from. Before I started watching this film, I thought that the idea of having a mute lead character seemed like a bold and brave creative decision for a children's feature-length animated film, but it cops out by giving him a voiceover that narrates his thoughts. Animation has the power to speak on behalf of a silent character, so the narration isn't necessary. Now sure, the narration isn't excessive, but it does sound unnatural. It sounds like it's trying too hard, as if it's terrified of the audience being confused. This shows the lack of confidence that the filmmakers have in their animation department's abilities. Why are so many filmmakers too afraid to try risks when making cartoons for kids? Give children some credit, they won't fall asleep or get bored the instant a character doesn't talk. There are loads of completely silent cartoon characters from successful animations, like Gromit, Dopey, Pluto, Maximus, Maggie Simpson, and Wily E. Coyote. Those characters don't send children to sleep, so Louis doesn't need a bloody voiceover narration. Silent characters are great for children because they can teach them the art of patience and how to read facial expressions. As for the film itself, well, it does do a decent job of displaying the hardships of Louis's disability. It shows him struggling to express himself to other swans in the lake, constantly hindered by his muteness. It's quite heartbreaking to watch him fail at communicating with his friends and family, despite all his hard efforts. The problem is that his disability is not the main focus of the film's second half. Once Louis decides to owe the music store for his trumpet, the rest of the movie directs its interest towards Louis becoming a rock star swan, rather than focusing on Louis's new outlet of social communication. It's not as awesome as it sounds because Louis's music career is too brief and unexciting. His rise to fame is too rushed. The fame doesn't corrupt him or give him any problems. He doesn't take advantage of his fame. He doesn't do anything fun or interesting while famous, and we don't get to see him using the trumpet to solve the troubles that his disability has given. Sure, the trumpet helped him translate his emotions to Serena, but can it be used for other things? At the beginning of the film, we saw all the problems that Louis's muteness gave him. So, can the trumpet be used to resolve these problems? Why leave all these conflicts unsolved in favour of a boring music career plot that could have easily been told through a montage instead? There is a subplot involving Serena getting married to someone else, but it's tough to care about this wedding when Serena and Louis's romance is underdeveloped and unconvincing. Sure, we get the impression that there's something special between them both, but I wouldn't go as far as saying that they're in love. Romantic love is a powerful and intimate connection that takes a long time to grow between two people. Not enough time is spent on developing Louis and Serena's relationship. Why should I care if Louis is going to lose Serena to a groom-to-be when I don't believe in his romance with Serena? While I did often feel sympathetic towards Louis's hardships, I didn't really find him to be an interesting character. He's too saintly and nice. There's no sharp edges or character quirks to his personality. He's just pleasant. So yeah, everything about Louis is pretty forgettable, except for the fact that he can't talk. Louis's father is an overdramatic swan who thinks very highly of himself. 
but deep down he's a fragile and sensitive bird. He's also a very caring father that goes to great lengths to give his son a voice. In addition, when he steals the trumpet for Louis, the guilt eats him up inside and drives him nuts. There's so much endearing humanity and charisma in his character, and I enjoyed his on-screen presence. Then there's Serena. As a little baby Signet, she's a kooky and sweet tomboy that's pretty likeable, but soon as she grows up into an adult swan, all that personality is drained away as she becomes plain as an unpainted wall. There's a couple of other characters too, like a little boy who befriends and supports Louis. He's okay, I guess. Nothing memorable about him, though. Then there's Boyd, a pompous and vain swan who steals Serena from Louis. He's not a funny or threatening villain, he's just stuck up and annoying. Then there's Louis's manager. He's your typical money-grubbing villain. There's nothing much to him. The Trumpet of the Swan does use character animation to reflect Louis's feelings and emotions. To an extent. It does try, but it's not perfect. However, it's not bad enough to warrant pointless voiceover narration. What about the animation for the film as a whole? It's a bit too overactive and fidgety. It has a hard time calming down. Now, some people presume that good animation is when a cartoon character moves around constantly. No. No, 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 no. No. Pauses are really important to make a character seem alive in animation. Why? Well, they help a character look organic. We all pause to stop and think sometimes. So, if you're going to make your character move all the time like this, it just looks unrealistic and annoying. The voice cast includes Jason Alexander, Reese Witherspoon, Joe Mantegna, Carol Burnett, Seth Green, Dee Bradley Baker, Cav Sose, Pamela Adlon, E.G. Daly, and Corey Burton. So yeah, it's a pretty impressive cast. <laughs> I think the ones that stand out the most are Seth Green and Jason Alexander. Green does a great job as Boyd, gleefully embracing his role as a narcissistic prat. Alexander gives Louis's father a theatrical and dramatic voice full of anguish and sincerity. The original music for The Trumpet of the Swan was composed by Marcus Miller, a former member of the funk band The Jamaica Boys. The trumpeteering is one of the most important aspects of this movie's music department because it reflects Louis's on-screen abilities. In all honesty, the trumpeteering sounds bloody brilliant. Louis' romantic trumpeteering is gorgeous and almost hypnotic to listen to. Plus, Louis' more vibrant trumpeteering is upbeat and lots of fun. The music score, however, isn't as strong as Louis' trumpeteering. It's not got enough power or energy to captivate my ears. It's not bad, just not as awesome as what comes out of Louis' horn. There are some original songs, too. They aren't too annoying, but remain pretty bland. I mean, most of them are very unimaginative and forgettable. The only exception would have to be Louie, 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 sung by Little Richard. It's the only song that achieves a catchy chorus, fun visuals, and a swinging river. To conclude, The Trumpet of the Swan is a prime example of what happens when a film doesn't take risks. The end result is an underwritten second half, an unconvincing romance, and lots of lost potential. The film's strongest aspects are either wasted or forgotten. That being said, when the film does focus on Louis's disability, it's quite touching to watch. In addition, I love the characters of Louis's father and little Signet Serena. Plus, there are some outstanding vocal performances, particularly from Seth Green and Jason Alexander. I'm going to give this film two and a half jazzy stars out of five.